To this weekend's alleged mutiny in Russia, which according to uh, U.S. officials is the most significant threat uh, to President Putin's regime since he took office decades ago. A little background for you here. Overnight, the first sighting of Russia's defense minister, a man named Sergei Shoigu, since the Wagner Group, the Wagner Group with the accent, a mercenaries hired to fight alongside Russian troops, seized a Russian military base and marched toward Moscow. And Wagner chief Yevgeny Prizhgogin uh, attempting to remove top military leaders he says are incompetent, one of them being Shoigu. Shoigu is seen meeting with military officers in Ukraine in an attempt to show its business as usual. That's after Prigozhin targeted the military leader, then halted the revolt, reportedly striking some sort of a deal. However, Secretary of State Antony Blinken saying in a new interview that the situation is developing and ever changing on the ground and that, quote, we haven't seen the last act. White House correspondent Allison Harris has the latest reaction from Washington. Hey, Allison. Hey, good morning to you, Marky. The uprising against Russian President Putin lasted only about 24 hours, but it is being called a devastating failure for President Putin, causing chaos in Russia and loosening Putin's grip on power for the first time since Russia invaded Ukraine 16 months ago. This morning, there are questions remaining about how much the U.S. knew about this rebellion and when. A U.S. official confirming to News Nation that U.S. intelligence it picked up information recently that Yevgeny Prigozhin, the head of the mercenary Wagner Group, was planning some type of action against the Russian military, but the speed at which he acted surprised even intelligence officials. U.S. and Western intelligence agencies saw signs that Wagner was making preparations, including amassing weapons and amassing ammunition. Prigozhin says the Russian armed forces launched a missile strike on the Wagner Group's rear camps and vowed to punish them. The revolt ended Saturday when they struck a deal brokered by Belarus. Wagner mercenaries withdrew from the southern Russia city of Rostov. There are reports that Wagner fighters are still holding on to military installations in Russia as it remains unknown exactly where Prigozhin is as of this morning. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says you could see the tension mounting and mounting and that this did not come as a surprise. I think you see cracks uh, emerge that, that weren't there before. To the extent that Russia is now distracted, that Putin has to worry about what's going on inside of Russia, I think that creates an, an additional advantage for the Ukrainians to take advantage of. And over the weekend, President Biden spoke with allies and partners about the attempted march on Moscow, including leaders from France, Germany, the UK and Canada. The president also speaking with Ukrainian President Zelensky in a call on Sunday, reaffirming the United States' unwavering support through continued security, economic and humanitarian aid. Zelensky saying that was a positive and inspiring call, later tweeting that the world must put pressure on Russia until international order is restored. Marky. All right, Allison Harris, thank you so much from the White House this morning. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.